Hey, 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 what's up? Gleb Alexandrov here. Welcome to an unexpected tutorial about the camera navigation in Blender. What motivated me to record this quick tip is that I saw Shwan Prada, one of my favorite VFX artists, having a hard time with navigation in Blender, so I thought that this could be a nice opportunity to record something. So we'll be talking about cameras that obviously you can find in the Shift A menu and their settings are on the right in the green camera icon menu. And before getting started, this awesome air conditioning unit is from a free pack of air conditioning units by Anton Dmitriev. The link is in the description. As we already know, if we jump over to the top view menu, we can set active object as camera from there. Uh, but actually nobody does it like that. Everybody just uses a control zero hotkey. So for example, if you have two cameras, select one, control zero on the numpad to, uh, to mark this camera as active. And if you want to change it, select the second camera, control zero again, and it becomes the active one. That means that this particular camera will become active once we press zero on the numpad. But then as soon as we move the viewport ever so slightly, we pop out of the camera view. We can press N to toggle the right tool shelf or click over there, navigate to the view tab and pop in camera to view checkbox. This checkbox activated will make it behave just like other content creation suits and maybe that will work better for you. That is, if you're used to this behavior when the camera is attached to the viewport navigation. Personally, I got used to having this checkbox turned off for no particular reason. Maybe it's a matter of personal preference, but I like to zoom in, do something with model, then press zero on the numpad, and it takes us back to the camera view that we have already established, and we can make a quick render and don't worry about accidentally mangling the the camera position and stuff like that. What we can also do is click on the camera border to select an active camera, just left click on it in the viewport. Of course we can select it in the outliner, in the layer manager as well, uh, but I find it easier to just click on the border view. Uh, if the camera is hidden it's a little bit problematic, but anyway. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that we have flying navigation that is totally garbage, absolutely useless, uh, but uh, we also have the walk navigation. That is just uh, first-person shooter controls implemented in Blender. You can move by using the WASD keys. If it's a little bit too fast, you can adjust the speed of the camera movement by using the mouse wheel. Apologies for the screencast keys going mad, I will disable it for a moment. All right. The E and Q hotkeys will move the camera up and down respectively. I use this style of movement pretty often and actually it doesn't need the camera to view uh, checkbox enabled to work. Uh, maybe that's why I resort to this style pretty often. But aside from that we can just use the move and rotate functions of Blender. Just select the camera, press G to move, shift to move it in smaller increments or in a less sensitive way. Press R to rotate if you want to fix the horizon, that sort of stuff. Uh, scale won't work, apparently. What else do we have here? The transform orientations. Uh, actually, it's pretty interesting because, for example, um, by default, the transform orientation is set to global. Z moves it on the Z axis, on the global Z, but if you press Z twice, it will switch over to the local Z, which is kind of camera zoom. What else? Uh, if we press the R hotkey twice, the rotate hotkey, it will activate the trackball rotation. We can use it to look around in some cases and we will talk about it later. It may come in handy if you want to, for example, right click, go mirror and mirror on the local X axis to flip the canvas horizontally. And after doing it, you can no longer use the first person mode, it will go mad, uh, but you can use the trackball rotation. And uh, I realized that it probably sounds a bit perversive that you need to memorize dozens of hotkeys, but once you get accustomed to it, it starts to make sense, uh, at least from my perspective. There is a guilty pleasure in doing it. 
By the way, if you want to constrain the view area only to the camera border, you can adjust the passport to parameter uh, in the camera settings in the viewport display tab. For now, let me put it back to, to, to its default value. What else do we have? Transform orientation. Ah, pivot point. By default, the pivot point is set to active element, if I'm correct, or the median point. Nevertheless, we can switch it over to the 3D cursor mode and then shift right click to position the 3D cursor where we want and it will serve uh, as an anchor for the camera rotation. And by the way, when the camera is decoupled from the viewport, we can zoom in like that and it won't mangle the position of the camera. Pretty useful. So, we set the 3 cursor first, then select the camera, press R and Z, for example, to constrain the rotation to the Z axis, and we get this nice orbiting effect. Actually, I, I use it quite often, it, it takes time to get used to, to get used to this paradigm where when you use the 3D cursor as a kind of an anchor for the camera, um, but it's, uh, it's pretty neat, especially with the RR, the trackball style rotation, when you press R twice, and then you hold shift to, to move it in a finer way. Now just for fun, let's activate the auto keying in the lower part of the screen and press shift space to enable the playback and record something. Coupled with a responsive nature of EV render engine, it, I think it works wonders for quick tests, play blasts and other stuff that involve camera movement and we want to check it out really quickly. Another thing that I don't think is included by default in the Blender camera settings uh, is the aim of the camera, just like in 3ds Max for example. We can imitate it by creating an empty object and parenting our camera to it. Select the camera, then shift click on the empty, right click, parent object and that will pair in the camera to the object. Well, we need to switch back to the active element mode instead of 3D object. So now it works. Then it's a matter of rotating this empty object. This is our camera aim, so to speak. And just to repeat it the second time, we can move the camera on the local Z axis uh, that makes it dolly zoom by pressing G and Z twice. G and Z, Z. Mortal Kombat style brutality combo makes it work like this. May feel clumsy, but that becomes the second nature really fast so once you start using it often. Alright, what I also have to do with my cameras in Blender is that I take this concept of the camera aim a little bit further and create a sort of a camera rig. It usually involves a bunch of empty objects and I parent them one to another and camera to one of them. So now we can animate them in a slightly more complex way. I will animate the location of the first one by pressing I in the viewport and selecting location to add the keyframe. Select keyframes T and select linear to make sure that the motion is constant rather than have is in, is out. For the second one I will try to imitate the camera shake by pressing G in the middle of the animation playback and shaking my mouse. And the third one will be this very fine camera shake that I will also uh, animate using the auto keyframe function. Lastly, we can parent the largest empty object to the camera aim for a little bit of orbiting motion and call it a day. Awesome. I think that pretty much concludes the selection of quick tips about camera navigation in Blender that I wanted to share. And notice that it is animated. Of course, there is more things to learn about cameras, like for example, why the part of the 3D world suddenly disappears once you get closer to the object or conversely further away from it. It may occur only to the camera view and at the same time in the viewport it will behave just like you would expect. That's because the planner camera has its own clip start and clip end parameters that need to be adjusted within the camera settings. The safest bet is just to set the start value at its minimum, like 0.001 or something like that, and adjust the end value accordingly. It's worth noting that it's not the same as adjusting the clip start and end values for the viewport settings. We need to pay attention to the camera settings in this case. 
or for example the orthographic mode uh, there is no sense in moving the camera closer or, or further away uh, the scale can be manipulated by using the orthographic scale parameter and there are more and more tips that are possibly worth sharing but we will stop right here because that is already enough uh, to start the ball rolling I think at least these navigation techniques are the techniques that I use most often in Blender I think and make sure to visit Shuan's blog, shuanprada.com. Some amazing, amazing, I don't have words how cool they are. Uh, VFX simulations, breakdowns, training. Uh, this one is by important looking pirates. Mind blowing. Shuan, if you're watching it, I hope that was helpful, at least a little bit. Yeah, Blender can be confusing at times. I totally get that. Hopefully now it's a little bit less confusing though. Hope to see more content from you on your blog and everywhere. Stay safe, have a nice day.